What's going on guys? Today I'll be covering Kingdom Come Deliverance and some of the backlash it has received from the progressive media as they don't particularly like historical accuracy and they really don't like the lead developer of this game as I'll show you very soon he doesn't really take too much shit from these progressive ideologues. So this is the first article I found it says I've seen a lot of discussion in here concerning the forthcoming Kingdom Come Deliverance. I don't often feel the need to do this but I feel I've got to put out a buyer beware on the developers responsible for the game. Now it's a very virtue signaling style of argument and instead of actually addressing any of the flaws in this game which it is a great game but there are some flaws to it which I see a lot of people overlooking which I will talk about at the end but for all intents and purposes it is a really enjoyable game there's a lot of love that has been put into the design the storyline if you haven't already I would suggest picking it up I actually played this on a friend's steam account when I went away for a couple of days so I'll be looking to get this game as well but Frankly speaking, the lead developer Daniel Vavra is an unashamed racist and sexist, which he is not. His Twitter account is full of anti-PC, anti-social justice warrior tirades that come across as ramblings of a xenophobe. He's also a supporter of Gamergate and makes absolutely no attempts to hide his reprehensible opinions, which, as you can see, this person is under the delusion that Gamergate was all about hating on the women. So, take their opinions with a grain of salt. As you will see the comments that this person is referring to in a bit and they're not racist or sexist. I don't think he's a xenophobe either. And we continue. This interview on Gotaku in July 2015 laid his beliefs bare. In fact, one of the reasons he developed the game was because he believed it was historically accurate to not have any non-white characters anywhere. Which is provably false given that medieval life was a melting pot of different races. Ah no, he consulted with many historians while making this game because he wanted it to be historically accurate. And apparently they laughed in his face when he said that there's a lot of black people in 15th century Bohemia. Yes, there were Moors in Spain, but that's a long way away from where Bohemia was. And I'm just sick of progressives trying to rewrite history like Joan of Arc is now being played by a black woman. Why? But anyway, people have brought up the argument that hundreds of other developers who worked on the game don't deserve to suffer lost sales because of one racist. He's not a racist. But I have to call foul on that. He's unashamed in his racism and it's clear that the game comes from a source of deep rot. It really doesn't. It is a very enjoyable game. The combat system needs work. As you can see now, I got uh, a little bored. It was the end of my two days playing it, so I just ran around killing people. Once I figured out you could just take out a bow and just shoot people in the face and they didn't really react. I was like, okay, that's that's fantastic. But you can see that instead of virtue signaling, he's just put w work into the storyline, into the world. It looks fantastic. But anyway, I'll implore people to not buy the game, to boycott it. We have to show that people who hold such disgusting views should not be rewarded and that games that come from such a rotten, anti-progressive stance don't deserve to succeed. Uh, you are one of the rotten elements, so I don't want to see progressive games succeed. But this game sold 1 million copies in about a week, so I think it's doing okay. Because gamers will support these type of companies, ones that don't just bow down to the progressive left instantly, like Subnautica did. I saw a tweet that I tried to find but I couldn't. And it was where someone was like, which one would you rather see a female character or improvements to gameplay? And I was like, 90% gameplay. And then this progressive was bitching about that. She was like, gamers. It's like, yes, we want gameplay. We don't care if it's a whammon or a man. P.S. Incidentally, one of the sound engineers who worked on Subnautica was revealed to be a massive bigot and was consequently fired from the studio. Yay, someone lost their livelihood. Isn't that fantastic, Andrew? I hope the gaming community does more to thin out the cancerous elements that infest it. I really do. You are one of those elements, Andrew. May I'm sorry, but he consulted with historians. Bohemia, which is now the Czech Republic, was white. That is completely fine. If you made a game in ancient China about the different wars, which I really hope someone does, as I've been reading up on it, it's fascinating. I wouldn't want to see white people there, or black people, or Middle Eastern people. It would make no sense. So anyway, Ga Grand Gallic J starts off by saying, 
Daniel blames the press for publicising his racist remarks that no people of colour hate that term. And then he's not paying enough attention to his game. Uh, Daniel responds what's racist about historical accuracy. Uh, Jay links to an article about Spain and the Moors. And Daniel refutes this. It's a game that's set in his uh, country, his history, and he's consulted with historians. So Jay, maybe you should stop talking out your ass, bud. And let's flip the races. If this was a Black Panther game, I don't think anyone would care if it was all black people. So Zack then tweets out to Warhol Studios, just FYI, one of our creative directors is currently implying people of colour are incompetent. And then Daniel kindly informs this person that he actually owns the studio. So, yeah, it's not going to do too much, Zack. I love how the progressives constantly try and get people fired from their jobs. And he's not even saying that they're incompetent. He is using their logic, which you will see in a sec, and... It goes on, uh, Daniel explains to these people that he is consulting everything with top historians on the period and that they laughed when he talked about this nonsense. So Jay once again tweets out that no one ever made the trek and it was about an 11th century French king, which these people really need to study history slightly more. And. There's just no push for any other companies but white companies to do this. Which is, I think, is why Daniel is partly pissed off. He's making a game about the history of his company. He, he, you can tell the love in this game. And yet these people are getting pissed off at history. And they're blaming it on him. But this tweet's one of my favourite. Thanks to popular demand by history revisionists. And for the sake of accuracy, let me introduce you to our protagonist. The Black Knight. If you haven't seen that movie, go see it. It's corny. It's one of my favorites. I watched it with my dad when I was younger. I, I've watched that movie far too many times to admit. But And also, I would love if the Black Knight was the protagonist of this particular game. But go watch it. You'll thank me later. So he goes on to say, Do you think that in the lack of game developers of some cultures, countries is a result of white colonialism? Tariq Musa, you sure seem to. Why don't you ask for or accuse, as you seem to refer, Chinese developers to produce diverse games. Is the problem of European developers that there are so few games produced in Africa, South America, or the Middle East? No, it isn't. If you want to produce a game about the history of your country, you don't have to change it for anyone. This game has got so much good press, and the, the developer deserves it, even though people seem to be sort of excusing some of the flaws, but it's fine. They're, they're good flaws, if that makes any sense. So this is where they got the accusation that he is saying that the coloured people are incompetent, which he is not, as you can see on the screen now. But the last tweet is really striking. So Tariq, is it my duty as a white man to produce games not about my culture, but about yours? Why don't you just make the games? And that is a fantastic point. Progressives, if you hate these games so much, go make a game yourself. Oh wait, it'll turn out like Brianna Wu's game and no one will play it. So you have to appropriate good gaming companies freaking games to push your narrative. So we go on to another article that's slightly nicer, but I still completely disagree with. So Kingdom Come Deliverance is a game that's recently been released and that there is obviously a controversy going on around it that I haven't really seen many people cover. And he says whitewashing, which in general has been under increased scrutiny. Oh, really? Has it? So it's in the final stages of editing, and I just wanted to add this in. The Iron Fist Netflix show was not whitewashing whatsoever. The character was always a white character. Appreciating other cultures is how those cultures survive. It's how cultures grow together. It's how you learn from each other. What the hell is actually wrong with these progressives? Well, whitewashing means apparently historical accuracy to this idiot. So he admits that the developers consulted historians throughout the development of the game to make it historically accurate. But hearing this, apparently for this particular writer, at least for him, gives him a bit more of a pass why do they need to pass on the issue rather than it had been taking place in some location where historically more people of colour there. However, the plot thickens apparently. And it's all revisionist history. That's what I think anyway. So 
one of the developers it has been found is seemingly an advocate for the very least the alt-right daniel is not alt-right you idiot which for the uninformed is an easier place to find some racism and bigotry than others yes progressive the progressive outlet is probably an easier place to find racism than the alt-right you are way more racist than they are so he finishes up by saying that the game was probably not meant to be intentionally negligent to the other races and he does apparently appreciate the effort involved in being historically accurate but then he goes on to completely not understand that gamers don't care that you use a controller or a mouse as that's just a tool to access the game and that doesn't really take away from the immersion but if you're making a historically accurate game having random black people and Middle Eastern people and Chinese people in said game would draw you out of it. And I'm sorry, I don't want uh, developers to have to be like, oh, well, I want to make a historically accurate game, but no, I have to be inclusive. So let's just add a bunch of black people, like the Black Joan of Arc, which is so flipping ridiculous. So to finish up this video, I'll be giving you my thoughts and impressions of the game so far. Visually, it's very impressive. The storyline is fantastic, but I've seen a lot of creators overlook some of the flaws in this particular game. So I wanted to give you an honest first impressions and let's go through some of the flaws. The combat system isn't amazing, especially once you learn that you can just shoot 95% of the people in the face and they don't really react. They just stand there with their sword drawn, getting shot in the face with an arrow. The hard bushes I find really, really annoying. And I've been stuck in those freaking hard bushes more times than I want to admit, where you just have to reload as you can't get out whatsoever. Oh, and to get over a tiny ledge, it'll take you 5 to 10 seconds as your character acts like he has never lifted a single item in his entire life. And he did work as a blacksmith. So that's... Plus, if you try and jump over ledges, you're just going to waste your stamina, so I wouldn't particularly do that either. But these flaws can be addressed, they can be overlooked, which you probably will after a while, as the storyline, the world, and just the devotion and real care that you can see has gone into this game will keep you coming back. I'm really looking forward to actually getting it, or probably sending my friend away again so I can borrow his Steam account, as I want to progress further in the game. It seems like a game that will really pick up, and could be even a 9 for me once I get to see more of the storyline, once I've progressed more, my character has improved as all RPGs, obviously. So if you haven't got this game already, I would definitely recommend it and show some support to a, a development team that isn't just bowing down to the social justice warriors at, with their crusade against history and historical accuracy. I, once again, I'm sorry that Bohemia didn't have any colored people in it. I really am, but that's just life. And this video is very refreshing to make as it's fantastic to see a game developer sticking to their guns and focusing on what's important, the game. Us gamers are very forgiving if you treat us right. We can ignore the bugs, we can ignore the glitches, as long as the core is there, as long as you are treating us with respect. You put your heart into it and we will support you. And it it's just please progressives stop trying to rewrite history I'm sorry but in the 15th century it was not an incredibly multicultural society in Europe there were most likely some like the the Moors in Spain there were some non-white people but they're a tiny tiny percentage it's like Doctor Who once the progressives took over that they did a an episode about London and the history of the UK and they acted like it was 40 to 50 percent black in like the 1800s and I looked up the statistics and it was only 10 percent maximum like a hundred years before that and it was decreasing rapidly because they were getting no more immigration from black countries so it was max about five percent of the people and if you see this episode you're like wow it was 50 percent black <laughs> it was one of the worst episodes of television I've ever watched as to go off on a bit of a rant to sum it up the end of this story was evil white slave oppressor terrible the doctor actually punching someone which he never does so thanks for ruining that as well and the plucky black heroine saves the day from the evil race it's just 
ah, please take your politics out of my favorite shows, Progressives. But buy this game. You'll really enjoy it. Also, I've got two tickets to MythCon. It's, uh, they're worth $125 each, so it's the conference and the after party. I'll be doing a giveaway of some kind. I've had a lot of suggestions, such as like a raffle, where you like, comment, and subscribe. That's each an entry. I want to give it away to people that actually want to attend the conference, as I am a special guest. So I'm going to be trying to save up to get a ticket to actually attend. So it'd be fantastic to see some of you guys there if you're going already. Plus, I can't wait to see some of the creators as I'm doing a video on MythCon because they have really stepped up for this next conference. They have a lot of interesting debates. They have a lot of interesting creators that I think you guys will really want to see. And uh, the progressives such as Christy Winters are already losing their minds and it's just too much fun. So look forward to that. Thank you once again to my Patreons. We'll be doing a live stream in the next couple of days. So yeah, I'm saving up for a ticket to America, folks. So any help that you could give me will be greatly appreciated but i'm working on a lot of things in the back end here i'll be doing a lot more gaming related topics such as progressives infiltrating games as they generally do and just games by themselves so let me know if you've got kingdom come deliverance let me know what you think of the game if you think what the flaws that i have stated are accurate of your are oh, you declan you're just nitpicking but it's a fantastic game the developers have done it right and i can just see it improving but anyway, I'll catch you guys later.